Shalom, brothers and sisters, it's Brother Kwame, and I'm back at it with another video, and in this video today, it's going to be called Breaking Generation Curses, that's right, today's video, this video today, is going to be about Breaking the Generation Curses, and I'm going to go ahead and open up with a prayer before I begin. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decrease myself and crucify myself, that you may increase, Lord God, ask for your mighty word and your mighty spirit to come Manifest on this video, manifest on me, brother Kwame. Let it be all of you and none of me, my heavenly father, Lord God. I just thank you so much for opening my opening up my eyes today, my father God, Lord. Continue to keep me awoke, spiritual conscious, Lord God. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I just thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing and what you are about to do, Lord God. I thank you for just revealing your spirit to me, Lord God. Hold it that I can be seated and allowing me to see the deeper things. And I just Welcome you in, Lord God. That he said that he said that he Okay, if you are just joining me, the topic is breaking generational curses. And a lot of people they have different type of generational curses in their lives. A lot of generation curses. Some of them have the root of their parents, mothers, grandparents. You know. See, the thing is, the generation curses, it starts from the root, and the curses will come on their children if the folks don't get the Lord God in their life and repent, because only the, because only the Lord God can break these generational curses. He is the only one that can heal your, 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 your sickness and your illness and forgive you for your sins. And in order to do that, we have to surrender ourselves completely to the Lord God. Because it's folks walking around with drug addiction, dope addiction, alcohol addiction. They have all type of addictions, you know, what not. And some people have, you know, blindness and all type of other illness on their bodies due to generational curses. And it was the generational curses that wasn't broken. And they wasn't broken because folks have not got the Lord God in their life. Folks are not living for the Lord God. Therefore, that brings forth type of many many types of generational curses folks have been got raped parents have got raped folks have not been set free and chose the lord chose to live through the lord and that generational curse is going to continue to keep going on down the line and the thing is a lot of people always ask they always asking me about god is so good why would he allow an innocent woman an innocent little girl to get raped that's that's your answer right there and I know a lot of you might not agree with me. A lot of you might not understand. But that is the answer. Because a lot of people are under generational curses. And the curses have not been broken. Due to their sins. Due to the parents and the grandparents and the ancestors' sins. And none of the ancestors, grandparents, parents, they haven't broken the curse. They haven't repented to the Lord God and broken the curse. And it's many different generational curses. And you got to give your life over to the Lord God, you know. Because these generational curses will keep on going down the line. You have a generational curse, a premature death. You see, folks is just dying at an early age before their time. And that is because that's a generational curse. And it needs to be broken. You need the blood of Jesus to wash those sins from your hands. And you need the blood of Jesus to wash those sins away from your ancestors. Your mother, your father, your, your brother, your sister, your grandfathers. And grandmas, those generational curses are being attached to you. And they gotta be broken with the Lord. They gotta be broken with the, the word of the Lord God. And I'm gonna get into it when, with an example because King David, he had a generational curse on his family. And he sinned, he sinned against the Lord God. That's right, King David, he sinned against the Lord God, sleeping with Bathsheba. Now I want you guys to go with me. Go with me to the book of 2 Samuel. Go with me to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 9. Go with me to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12 the ninth verse. And the word of the Lord says, Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the church of Ammon. You see that? King David, he has transgressed against the Lord God. 
He slept with Uriah's wife. You see, he slept with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. He transgressed against him, and it, this would cause David to be cursed. And now I'm about to go to the next verse. Verse 10. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. See, David taking Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, that will cause a curse to be on David's household, people. And the first curse at hand, it was King David's son, death, that baby son, the the one Bathsheba had bear, the baby died. And I'm going to show you this. Go with me to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 14 now. Go with me to the book of 2 Samuel chapter 12 verse 14. Even though this is the same book, but <laughs> I'm going to show you. The word says, how be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blasphemy the child also that is born unto thee shall what shall surely die see King David he was well known for his righteousness so his transgression it made it look like he had blasphemy against the Lord God and so the Lord God was telling him you know that this child will not live and this was one of the first things that had happened the child that Bathsheba would bear to him, it would lose his life because of David transgressions. And then after that, we will find out that it will cause David's son to rape his daughter Tamar. Go into the book of 2 Samuel chapter 13 verse 10 through 12. Because this will cause his son Abner to rape his son Tamar. And we in the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 13, verse 10 through 12. And the word of the Lord says, And Ammon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Ammon, her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. See, this would cause David's son Amnon to sleep with David's daughter Tamar. You know, these was both his, these were both of his kids. Amnon and Tamar. David's son would rape his daughter Tamar. And this is because David had transgressed against the Lord God. God told him in first in first Samuel 12 verse 10, the sword would be upon his household because he did what he did. And not only this, it would also cause Solomon, another son of King David, to do some things, you know. God told him to not go after those women, and he did it anyway. And I'm going to show you this with the word. Go with me to the book of 1 Kings, chapter 11, verse 1. We about to show you what King Solomon did, because he, he transgressed against the Lord God as well, too. He had a fornication spirit on him, just as well as the other brother Ammon had a fornication spirit on him. Just as well as the father, King David, had a fornication spirit on him. He committed the, for, he, he committed the first transgression um, sleeping with Bathsheba. And this would go down the line in generation, in a generation curses, fornication, fornicating. Now go into the book of 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. And the word of the Lord says, But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, and Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites of the nations, concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon claimed 
unto these in love. Solomon clave unto these in love. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. You see that? That fornication spirit that was on King Solomon, that was on his father David, and his other brother Abner, it was the same spirit on King Solomon. And that caused him to turn his heart away from the Lord God. And the thing is, many of you folks today have these curses on you. And it's due to family generation curses from mothers, daddies, fathers, grandmamas, granddaddies. And the thing is, this has to be broken. You even have curses with no significant other. A person can't be happy with another person, you know. They can't even be happy. They can't find a wife. That's right. Or they can't find a wife because of that generation curse. They wife or their husband. This goes all the way down the line. This has to be broken. And we're going to break it today. We got some deliveries. We're going to break it with a prayer. And I urge you people to say this prayer with me. And I urge you people to say this prayer many times as possible. Because the more you say it, the more effective the prayer will be. Now, I'm going to go ahead and say this quick prayer. This is how you break the generation curse. Your preachers are not going to give you this on that Sunday God pagan worship day. You can only get this by reading your Bibles because some preachers are just not interested in giving you guys this type of information. But Brother Kwame has the spirit of truth pumping through my blood. Now, I'm about to give you guys a prayer to break those curses today. Those soul ties and all those generational curses so you won't have to grow up and be a part of what your family is a part of. You can break that generation curse. Here we go. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I renounce all of cult practices and Satan and Satan will be dismissed today. I renounce all of these cult practices of Satan to break all curses associated with those those of cult practices. According to Galatians 3 and 13, Christ purchased our freedom, redeemed us from the letter of the law, for it is written in scriptures, curses is everyone who hangeth on the tree. Deuteronomy 21 and 23, I confess and I repent all sins listed in Deuteronomy 27 and 28 and break the curses associated with these sins in Jesus Christ's name. I confess and repent of my inequity and my father's inequity. According to Leviticus 26 and 40, I break the curses associated with these inequity in Jesus Christ's name. I break and loosen myself from all evil soul ties. My mother, my father, my sister, spouses, former sex partners, pastors, churches, friends, co-workers, and grandparents in the name of Jesus Christ. I forgive my mother, my father, my sister, and everyone else who's, who's ever hurt me, including all whites, blacks, Indians, co-workers, etc. I pray in Matthew 6 and 15, Matthew 18 and 21, Matthew 22 and 35, and Luke 11 and 4. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Father God, Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord God, I ask you to loose me from every generational curse. I break all curses that has been placed upon me and my family, including any demons that's being sent to us and curses of witchcraft, ungodly prayers as well, all words spoken Broken in anger of hurt or broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Kids, don't do drugs. I'm out. Shalom.